Oracle OCA series. The whole purpose of this series is to make you an excellent Oracle DBA. Now being a DBA is a really exciting job because you get to do all sorts of tasks. It's a, it's a very, very diverse job. For example, you're probably going to be faced with installing Oracle software and tools as well as other software that's related to your database somehow. But really, what is a database? And more importantly, what is a relational database? I mean, Oracle is a type of relational database. Well, let's first of all talk about what a flat file database is. A flat file database is just where you have a simple text file and all the information is separated by some common delimiter, such as a comma or a pipe symbol, and each record is usually delimited by a new line character. Well, the problem with flat file databases is that when you get into large quantities of data, it then becomes really, really complex to maintain relationships between different records. If you've ever dealt with a flat file database, you've probably used a language such as Perl to read in the information and then do whatever sorting you need to, and it, it can be quite confusing and quite painful. Now, a relational database is a completely different animal. It stores everything in the form of a table. Okay, so you might have a table that represents person records. You might have another table representing employee records, and so on. And uh, what I've got here in this diagram are arrows showing the relationships between the tables. And so each table will have columns representing the different data types. For example, you might have um, an employee name, an employee salary, and a commission, or the person might have first name, last name, address, and so on. And you maintain the relationship via constraints. And a constraint is just a database object, and we'll get into all the details of that later, but uh, the way your data is stored is much different. Now, if we were to open up the actual data file in a relational database, it doesn't look like a flat file at all. It's usually a binary file, and the only way to tap into that data is through SQL statements. So why Oracle? I mean, why is Oracle so special? How is it different from the other databases out there? Well, one of its big pluses is that it's a very, very robust database system, and it can run on pretty much any platform. It runs on Unix, Linux, Macintosh, Windows. Most other systems out there rely on a particular operating system. So it's a very, very flexible database system. Most likely you'll be managing database users, either creating or dropping their accounts or granting or, granting or revoking privileges. Your job will also involve a lot of storage management. For example, you'll have to create data files that go in your table spaces. You'll, you might have to shrink data files or create new table spaces. So we'll talk more later about what exactly is a table space and how that relates to data files. Now, as a DBA, definitely you'll be dealing with uh, performance issues. Oftentimes you'll have somebody come whining to you, you'll, they'll call you up or page you at 2 a.m. Hopefully you won't have a pager. Uh, but, uh, you know, there, there's performance issues. You can have a query that might take 12 minutes, or if it's poorly tuned, it might take 15 hours. So we will talk about performance in this course. You're going to have to manage and manipulate database objects. Well, what do I mean by an object? Well, it could be a table, it could be a constraint, a trigger. We'll cover all the different types of objects here, as well as security. Security is huge. If you don't have a secure database, you're leaving yourself wide open to all sorts of hackers out there. And if you're suspicious of somebody in your database going in there and, and dropping objects or manipulating objects that they shouldn't be, you can always turn on auditing. It's kind of like spying on certain users. It's a nice tool. Your job will also involve some light networking. So if you need to make applications communicate with your database or vice versa, you need to have the proper networking in place. Perhaps you'll have users migrating their data from one database to another. So this will involve some exporting and importing data. 
You might have data coming from another relational database system. So you might have an original database that was on Microsoft SQL Server, and then all of a sudden the management decides, you know what, we're going to switch to Oracle, and so you need to somehow get that data over on the Oracle database. And the last thing I mention here, which is probably the most important, is recovering from disasters. Well, what's a disaster? A disaster is anything that makes your database either crash or makes an application crash or if something performs so slowly that it's worthless. So we will talk about how to restore and recover data, what happens when data files mysteriously disappear, and how to recover from all that. So when you're finished with this series, you should be pretty comfortable to go out there and take the Oracle OCA test. So let me show you how to find out all the details of that test. So just go to Oracle's main website, and there's our Oracle expert on the front. Actually, he's just a model. Okay, so you scroll down and uh, look on the left-hand side. You'll see a link that says Education. So click on that. And on the left-hand side, you'll see the certification link, and then the exam details. So you scroll down to the link that talks about the Oracle Database 10G Administration 1. You click on that link, and we've got a bunch of bullet points, and these are all the topics that you need to understand to pass the test. So these are your goals. You're also going to need a machine to run your Oracle software on, as well as the software itself. So on Oracle's main website, on the right-hand side, you'll see where it says Downloads. That's where you're going to download the software, and it is free for a trial period. So underneath Database, where it says 10G Enterprise slash Standard Editions, go ahead and click on that, and eventually you get to the page where you download it. Now we have a whole nugget dealing with downloading and installing the software, so we'll just carry on from there. So let's get started.